If you're someone who does a lot of marketing online, then this episode is for you. You may be investing in paid advertising or you do a lot of email marketing to drive sales. If this is you, then you have to stay tuned and prepare yourself for the new digital changes coming your way. Um, Today, I'm going to be talking about the upcoming changes that Apple is about to introduce uh, in September. Uh, And what they're doing is they're updating their software as they normally do. It's the iOS 15. And this is all about putting users in control of their privacy, um, and which will ultimately impact how we as business owners track success uh, for email marketing efforts. And also we'll be touching on the next update that Google (laughs) Google will be introducing, which is all about cookie tracking. Um, which is uh, definitely leaving a massive um, impact on marketers. And I have spoken to a few digital marketing agencies who are going back to their whiteboards and starting to rethink how they will track and measure success of their digital marketing. So today I want to explore what these changes mean for digital marketers and business owners and how we can all build immunity from these constant tech changes and how we can future-proof our business growth online. So let's tune in. Before we tune into the show, I wanted to let you know about a free resource you can download from our website. If you're someone who is looking for more time in the day and some clever ways to boost your revenue this year, then you'll find our resource super helpful. It's a short checklist you can download to quickly identify which tasks you're doing now in your business, which could be performed by a techie automation. (laughs) For example, the repetitive tasks such as sending a confirmation email to a customer could be automated. Even some of the manual tasks you have as part of business operations could be performed automatically, saving you over 10 hours a week. Imagine all the fun things you could be doing in your business once you automate all those boring tasks. So to download this resource, just go to bumperleads.com forward slash tasks. Hi everyone, it's Yovana from bumperleads.com. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, Placing our trust in technology giants to help us drive leads and sales will, as I said, increasingly become more difficult as data collection becomes more scrutinized. We need to start thinking about how to future-proof our digital marketing so that we become immune to any future algorithm changes by whether it be Facebook, Google, or these big tech giants. We have to say goodbye to doing spammy ads and emails, and we have to welcome marketing strategies that actually respect consumers' time and attention spans. I have to say the honeymoon period that we enjoyed as marketers over the last seven years, I believe, uh, where we get to rely on third-party cookies to, to gather information and to target our Uh, customers and leads uh, may potentially be over. So I would like to start with a quote. I came across this quote and it's by David Ogilvy, who is the, he was actually known as the father of advertising. And he famously said this, the consumer is not a moron, she is your wife. (laughs) So his statement serves as a reminder for marketers to put their customers first and to stop putting our trust in uh, tech giants to collect data around our customers to drive sales. And the use of third-party cookies uh, made many consumers really feel exposed and vulnerable. Uh, Really, it it is quite creepy if you uh, understand how this data is collected, then you feel like you're being spied on. The overuse of cookie tracking by some advertisers has actually forced the European regulators to introduce stricter privacy laws around the data protection. So you would have heard of GDPR, which is uh, which stands for General Data Protection Regulation. And that is a huge, massive change in 2000, I believe, enforced, started to become enforced in May 2018. And in this ever-changing digital landscape, business owners might be wondering what they can do to future-proof their digital marketing efforts so that you don't rely on these new algorithm changes or these privacy changes and that you actually treat your consumer like she is your wife. (laughs) So number one thing is that we need to start thinking about building our own runway. What do I mean by that? 
when it comes to digital marketing, we seem to put all our faith into these big tech giants. Here's a very simple example to illustrate this point. When we want to get new leads, we go to Facebook to advertise. There is an acquisition cost associated with this. If you're paying for each lead, it would make sense for you to collect this lead and store it on your own database and don't leave it on the Facebook platform. However, we've met many businesses who don't do anything with these leads. They pay for them and leave them on Facebook. When the time comes to get leads again, they would go back and pay Facebook again to acquire them and so on. So you can see that the acquisition cost can actually skyrocket for you. Imagine if you could capture these leads and learn more about them. You could collect more data so that you can segment them into buckets in order to help you improve your advertising efforts. By owning your own customer data, you start to build an asset that is yours, as opposed to leasing it from the tech giants and you know, being at the mercy when they decide to change algorithms to suit them. Even during turbulent times, when tides change, you can always nurture your customers into a transaction when you own your own customer data. Now, uh, the second point that's very important to understand when it comes to digital marketing and being in control of your own customer data is to uh, be mindful and respect respectful of your consumers, because now we know that your consumer is your wife, uh, is to ask your customers for permission first. Uh, this is a concept that was coined by Seth Godin. Uh, it's, it's often referred to as permission-based marketing. So to give you an example, have you ever signed up to receive any updates from a brand that you love? I mean, that's an example of a permission-based marketing. Just because someone fills out an inquiry form on your website, it doesn't necessarily mean that they've given you permission to market to them. Even when you meet someone at a networking event, you collect their business card, this doesn't actually mean they gave you permission to add their details to a newsletter so you can email them some random content. Permission marketing is about customers opting in to receive marketing offers and promotions. Permission-based marketing is a way for businesses to offer incentives that align with their customers' interests. So receiving permission to market to your contacts is a way you can build trust, value, and brand loyalty. Likewise, if your contact hasn't given you the permission to market to them, it can result in customer frustration, privacy violations, and lost business. And by asking for permission, you get to qualify your leads better, which helps you achieve a quality database of leads that you can trust. Having a trusted database of leads becomes important if you're looking to future-proof your digital marketing efforts. To simplify this point further, your next email that you send won't be marked as spam. <laughs> The other point I would like to make is that the, the quality of data that you're collecting. With all the changes that are occurring now with Apple privacy update uh, for the software update that is actually scheduled to be released in about a week uh, away, so this is September 2021, uh, and browse the third-party cookies that are dying out, it's really time to start to build our own kind of baseline of the data that we already have. Start creating metrics to track your email marketing and advertising efforts now so you can easily benchmark how the new changes will impact your business. In the US, uh, for example, when Apple rolled out the iOS 14 update that prevented Facebook to collect, uh, prevented Facebook collecting cookies for advertising purposes, and there's been, I think, a lawsuit even between these big giants uh, because of this. It, uh, it is actually reported that more than 80% of Apple's users actually said, no, I don't give you permission to collect, uh, I don't give Facebook the permission to collect uh, my data. And having your own customer data platform that you can rely on is the key to future-proofing your digital marketing efforts. So uh, with Apple and why we're concerned about Apple, well, Apple pretty much controls and owns the majority of the smartphone market. So if we think about our data and, and where most of our customers come from and what type of devices they use, uh, it's probably going to be mobile uh, devices. And if they're coming from Apple and they're about to introduce some new changes, uh, which is all about controlling, uh, giving the users power to control their own 
um, data, uh, this will definitely uh, impact greatly on how uh, your email marketing platforms will present the success metrics. So if you have been relying on email open rates, for example, as one of the metrics that are supplied with your MailChimp um, MailChimp platform or something similar. People often ask us, what, what is the industry benchmark for email open rates? That's a very typical question. Uh, and often people will say, and there's so many articles you can Google online, where people say, oh, you know, if you're over 26%, you're doing really well. Well, those type of questions will no longer stand true uh, with Apple's update. It will actually force us into thinking about having a holistic a digital marketing plan rather than relying on these metrics to um, you know track the success of our digital marketing efforts and so what I mean by that is instead of relying on the email open rates maybe we need to start tracking on when we send an email out how many customers made the purchase if you're selling something online maybe you're an e-commerce business if you're an e-commerce business you have to st- start tracking your revenue, for example, as a bigger benchmark. So this is very important to note uh, because this is coming. And if Apple rolls this out, uh, I have no doubt Google is going to be doing the same or Android is going to be doing the same and other uh, platforms and software companies will be doing the same. So what I would be doing next is I would be thinking about maybe I need to invest in a smart marketing automation platform. And a great marketing automation platform can actually collect more than just an email address from your visitors and subscribers. Um, You can create smart data capture forms that that can assist you in collecting more data from your customers. And the key is to really ask them in the way of a survey. When a customer decides to give you their name, email address, phone number, date of birth, it's it's really what we call um, first party data. So you're actually collecting the data firsthand, you're holding it in your platform. This is not a third party data, which is what these regulations are all about. The regulations are about stopping uh, another app, uh, selling or sharing your information with another app. A smart marketing automation platform can help you segment leads and customers. So once you have all the data, you can do all the segmentation and all the fun things you want to do. Um, as well as you can automate steps so you can nurture them with information that they are interested in receiving. So in order to stay ahead of any algorithm changes, it is a must to invest in a great marketing automation platform. If you need help finding one for your business, just let me know. You can contact us at bumperleads.com and we are happy to show you what tech is best fit for uh, your business. So once you have the best platform that works for your business, The next step is to actually start building a 360 degree view of your leads and customers. And this all starts with a strategy on how do you plan to collect and nurture these leads. Once you start to collect and get the feedback or the view that you need about your customers, you will also be able to segment and categorize them based on how frequently they engage with you. Not only how they engage with you via email, but also on other channels and platforms you will have a fully integrated marketing system that shows the whole view of your customers. Your marketing will start to feel personal and you will be able to stay front of mind with your customers by sending them the right messages at the right time. By knowing all of what I've just mentioned, you will be able to start building your own, I guess, marketing growth system that is designed to help you attract the right leads to your business to drive sales and business success. As you can see, there are quite a few things you have to consider if you want to future-proof your digital marketing efforts. For real growth, marketing needs to operate in synchronization with the complete business. Once you put together a plan of action that is focused on helping you build your own digital runway, you can achieve sustainable growth. And I'm happy to help you out on this journey. If you're looking to have someone objectively advise you on what data points to collect, Just head on over to bumperlist.com and we'll be happy to have a chat over Zoom and talk about how these algorithm changes that are happening in the digital marketing world 
are going to impact your business. Okay, that's it for the show today. Thank you so much for listening. And on the next few episodes, I'll be interviewing uh, different marketing experts and discussing the best marketing strategies to help you grow your business. Bye for now.